Hi guys, I'm Pedro from Portugal. Welcome to the Bushcraft Tools channel, to another video of Bushcraft and Survival. So what I want to do today is to show you how to build a survival shelter called the Debris Hut. And no, this is not a Bushcraft shelter or, or anything, this is a survival shelter. And for me, in my opinion, it's a really, really, really important and, use, and useful shelter to know in two situations. For one, if you are caught completely, completely unprepared and you, you have nothing with you you have, you, you have no knife, no cutting tools of any kind, no Swiss army knife, no cartridge, nothing, uh, because you can build this shelter without any kind of bindings or lashings or cartridge, uh, you don't require anything of that uh, to build this shelter and you don't have to necessarily cut anything with a, uh, with a cutting tool or with a knife to build this shelter as well. So it's really important in that situation. And the second situation is if you cannot do, uh, sorry, if you cannot make a fire. In a situation that you, can, that you can't make a fire, this kind of shelter is real, really useful because uh, it will trap the radiant heat that comes out of your body and will maintain the heat around you. It's almost like a, a sleeping bag. It's, it's more like a sleeping bag than a shelter. Okay? So, I hope you like it. Stay tuned. Let's do nothing it. to give. Nothing at all to flatter you with. I got no treasure chest, I got no Sunday best. Well, I am a poor man with nothing to give. I'll make a suit of brambles and thorns, wear it for you who to do is to make sure that the shelter has the right dimensions and by that I mean uh, when it's completed and all it's uh, is said and done the shelter cannot be too big for you otherwise uh, the radiant heat that ex that escapes from your body will not remain near you okay so there is certain dimensions that the shelter has to have to be really fi efficient and that dimensions are simple. What you, you want is to have just an open hand around you. Okay? So, an open hand on the sides, open hand on the top, open hand on the bottom, open hand uh, near the head. Okay? So, all the shelter will be just one open hand around you okay so like i said it will be more like a sleeping bag than a shelter itself okay uh, and this is really important and as you can see in, in those images i'm making sure of that laying on the ground and uh, sticking some sticks around me to make sure that uh, the shelter has the right dimensions like i said sticks around, stick on the bottom, stick on the top, so that's it. After that you want to build a really really good mattress uh, using debris or leaves, what have you. Uh, and this mattress has to be in a way that when you lay down on top of it and when it's compressed it will have at least four to five inches of height of compressed material to battle conduction for, from the ground so your body doesn't doesn't lose heat by being in contact with the cold ground and this is as important as having 
a really good cover okay so make sure you build a really good mattress next you want to do a kind of a tripod with one leg really 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 big okay one of the legs will be the main beam or, or uh, the, the the main support of the shelter and this is easy to do you can grab two fork sticks to be on the front and by making them match one to another and then placing the the long beam on top the tri the tripod will remain stable without any lashings or bindings and you want this crisscross of the three legs of the tripod uh, in other words the place where they match together to happen at about a little bit below waist level maybe at groin level so the entrance and the shelter itself will not be too big sometimes as you can see the inclination of the main beam or the main pole it's not enough to make our feet remain inside the shelter and in that case you can use a longer pole so it will meet the ground further away and the angle that it makes will not be too steep so this will allow the feet to remain inside the shelter or you can lift it up with two fork sticks or two Y sticks on the bottom easy enough just to make the bottom a little bit higher uh, making once again that angle with the ground not so steep and allowing your feet to be inside the structure after that you can start building uh, the structure of your shelter by placing some ribs uh, per se uh, on the sides of the shelter as you see on, the, uh, on those images it's what i'm doing and they don't need to be placed super super close to one another it can be some space between between them uh, some inches not a problem at all but there is one very very in important aspect that you have to consider when placing those ribs or those sticks on the sides of the structure that is the following you have to select these ribs or these sticks in a way that makes two things happen first of all the bottom part of the ribs must be placed following the contour of the shelter marked by the sticks that you stuck on the ground on the beginning one open hand away from your body those sticks mark the contour of the shelter so it will not be too big and those ribs the bottom part must follow that contour and secondly the top portion of those same ribs that you put leaning on the main pole or the main beam when you place them they cannot stick too high from the main beam because if that happens and some rain infiltrates your cover and gets to that to the to the point of, of one of uh, of those sticks it will run down and drip on you so pay attention to that detail so like i said the ribs or the sticks must be placed with the right length at the right place of the shelter to meet those two criteria uh, the bottom part placed on the contour marked by the sticks that you stuck on the ground and the top portion placed on the main beam not sticking more than one maybe two inches above it after you have your main structure built you want to put some uh, branches with leaves just to to close some gaps on on the on the structure nothing too, too, too fancy just just a, a few branches to hold the cover together when you put them when you put it on the top so you have this the structure now it's time to build the cover the cover of the shelter has to have at least two feet to be waterproof and to prevent your body heat to escape to the exterior so at least two feet or 60 centimeters uh, for those who use uh, centimeters 
so you really need a thick layer of debris or leaves what have you and this is why it's called the debris hut one simple way to do this is to start collecting the debris far away and as you collect them you are getting close to the shelter and the reason for this is very simple it's just because as you are working you are getting tired more tired and it's easier easier for you to get the debris further away when you are well rested and then when you are tired to get them near uh, the structure of the shelter than other, the other way okay so it's just for that reason alone and you can pile a bunch of leaves uh, really fast using a fork, a fork stick like a, a broom or a shovel and this is really useful if you are afraid of snakes or bugs what have you with that stick you can uh, displace the, the leaves and the debris and anything that's in there will go away okay so you can use a, a fork stick to do that and one tip for you one easier way uh, that conserves calories and time and effort one easy way of trans uh, of transferring the leaves or the debris to the shelter is using for example a jacket uh, a blanket uh, a tarp anything that has a large surface will collect more debris and more leaves each time that your arms alone so a tip for you to uh, conserve your energy is uh, a plastic bag uh, a trash bag a blanket uh, your jacket you can stuff that material with leaves and transfer the leaves or the debris to make the cover and by doing that you, you have to make less travels one very important aspect that you want to take in consideration when you are building the, the roof, the, the cover, is to put the bottom layers first and then build up to the top. Okay? Uh, pretty much as if you were building a, a roof with shingles. You put the, the, the bottom ones first and then build up to the top. So if it rains, the rain will slide through, through the roof or through the, the cover of, of your shelter without getting inside. Furthermore, when you are halfway to the top building your cover, you can even push the debris a little bit down and by doing this you are making uh, the, the, the roof, the cover, uh, more wide on the bottom and this prevents the top layers from crumbling down when you are putting, when you are putting them at last. If the cover is too narrow on the bottom, the top layers will crumble, will crumble down. So it has to be a little bit wide on the bottom and you can, uh, you can do this by pushing the debris a little bit down uh, when you are halfway to the top. Okay? Not compressing the debris because uh, it's, the, it's the dead air space between the, the debris and the leaves that uh, is making uh, your insulation not compressing it but just gently pushing a little bit down to accommodate uh, the top layers without that without them crumbling okay this is very very important as well as building from the bottom to the top so the cover will have all around the necessary width to uh, be waterproof and to protect you one more thing that you can do to improve your shelter if you are afraid uh, of the debris uh, get blown by the wind you can to prevent that you can put some branches around the, the debris the, the cover of the, the shelter so it prevents uh, it prevents them from getting getting blown by the wind now you have the cover completed so what's missing to complete the shelter if you pay attention and you enter the shelter like it is you will notice you will notice 
that the triangle of the structure of the shelter that triangle is too high from your body your body okay there is a big big space between your body when you enter the shelter and the main beam that huge huge space is made by that triangle so we want to reduce that space and one easy way to do that is to shove some sticks on the sides after the cover is completed you can shove some sticks horizontally about one open hand from your, bo your body when you lay down by doing that you are going to make a smaller triangle and then you stuff that triangle with debris, debris, leaves, what have you to close that gap and that space and now this shelter is much more effective in maintaining the radiant heat from your body around you so like I said it's, m it's more like a sleeping bag than a shelter okay what's missing the door the final step is m building a door that will fit very tight on the opening okay and the door for me it's as important as the rest of the uh, of the shelter okay you have to have a really really good door that fits really snug in the entrance and doesn't let the body heat escapes from the shelter so it's important that you build a really really thick door and that the door matches the entrance really really good and now the shelter is completed okay some side notes about the shelter although the main beam continues further away the shelter itself ends one open hand below my feet to minimize the space my body has to hit and you can see on those images that the main pole or the main beam continues away from the shelter uh, further, further away but the shelter doesn't end at the end of the pole okay and just one hand away from my feet the old shelter takes about three hours to three and a half hours to build okay so be aware of that uh, one thing you can do is put some extra leaves and debris near the entrance so when you get inside you can pull the door and all those leaves and debris behind you to close any gaps between the door and the structure of the shelter making a tight fit between the door and that and that structure also as you can see when all is completed the entrance is so small that's only at knee high level but the top of the shelter is at neck level and this is how it's supposed to be with this size so you have a really good mattress that combats conduction from the ground you have a really good cover that maintains your body heat around you and it's waterproof and this is a survival shelter this is a survival shelter like you saw that doesn't need any kind of bindings or lashings or cordage doesn't require any tools any cutting nothing and doesn't require a fire if you can't make a fire in a situation that you cannot make a fire it's really useful to protect protect you from the cold so remembering the five most important points one a structure with the right dimensions just an open hand around our body two a really good thick mattress that that's at least four to five inches when it's compressed with our body weight three a cover of at least two feet to insulate us in real cold weather and to be waterproof four close the, the extra space inside making a platform of sticks and stuffing that small triangle with debris and leaves and five make a really really thick door that fits snug and fill the gaps with extra debris so the heat can't go out and the cold can't get in and I have tested this shelter in uh, various situations uh, with a thermometer on the outside and one on the inside and the difference 
between the temperatures inside and outside uh, were pretty substantial. Uh, on the inside, I believe I achieved 11 degrees Celsius or, or above, 11.3, I think, or more or less 52 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the outside, I believe it was like uh, minus one uh, degree Celsius or more or less 27, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a big difference. And I've tested it again and again and again. And in one occasion, it was the, more or less the same temperature inside, uh, 11 point something degrees Celsius or uh, 52 de degrees Fahrenheit. And on the outside, it was even colder. It was like, uh, I believe, uh, almost minus three degrees Celsius or uh, like uh, uh, 25 degrees Fahrenheit outside, I believe. So it's a big difference. Other thing that you have to be aware of is that that temp temperature outside, if it gets a little bit windy and you are on the out on the outside uh, with no protection the heat will be rubbed from your body as if it were a lot lot colder than that okay and this is due to the wind chill effect okay so you have to be aware of that if it if it's windy outside the difference it will be much 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 higher than uh, the temperature the temperature difference that you saw on those images okay because of that effect of the wind chill and yes i have also tested this shelter uh, for waterproofness and on that occasion i built a shelter with a cover made from uh, debris and pine leaves and like i said in in this video the cover was at least two feet high uh, 60 centimeter centimeters at least and then I saw on the forecast that it was going to rain really, really heavily. So before I put inside a t-shirt and some pants, some trousers, I closed the shelter and waited about uh, two days and the shelter was completely wet, soaking, soaking, soaking wet on the outside. I believe a thunderstorm uh, has gone uh, through that place so it rained pretty pretty heavily uh, on those two days and when I got there I removed the door I got the pants out the t-shirt out and it was all dry except from just one little spot that had some moisture on it but I think in a thunderstorm it was a pretty good result so I hope you liked it, uh, I hope you understood the big importance and usefulness of this shelter. Like I said, it's not a bushcraft shelter, it's a survival shelter and it's meant to be used when you are really unprepared with no knife, no cordage, nothing, or you cannot make a fire. So with all that said, I'm Pedro from Portugal, uh, thank you for your support, thank you for your thumbs up, thank you for your comments and I see you on the next one.